أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد After we spoke about the divine directives in regards to how to debate and discuss our differences with the opposing parties and with the adversaries and after we stated that ayah number 25 of Surah An-Nahl enumerate three strategies in discussing these differences tonight we will be talking about the methodology and the approach of Ahl al-Bayt in dealing with their adversaries and how they want us also to follow suit. As followers of Ahl al-Bayt it is not up to us to choose the methodology in which we conduct ourselves and debate with the adversaries. It is not a personal taste or a personal disposition that someone would say that I can choose freely how and what should I say and how I should say it to the adversaries. It is not a matter of choice. It is not subject to temperament and personal disposition. Rather, when we declare ourselves to be the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, therefore, the meaning of following of Ahl al-Bayt, it means that and entails the commitment to the full set of rules that have been presented by Ahl al-Bayt Their codes of conduct, their principle, and their ideology in presenting the case to the adversaries. It is a regimented system that we cannot deviate from. No one can say that I am free to choose the way I would present the argument to the adversaries. We have a very clear and explicit examples of the infallibles who have shown, who have taught us how to deal with the adversaries. If we look carefully at the words of the Imams السلام, we see that their words were always cordial, always pleasant when it comes to talking with their adversaries or even their enemies. For example, Imam al-Sadiq when it comes to the explanation of this ayah where the Almighty says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna," And tell people, obviously people here means the other side, the other party, your opposing party. Tell them pleasant words. The Imam السلام, explains. He said that you have to start with the pleasant words with both, with the believers and non-believers, with those who side with you and with those who are against with you, against you. And he says, when it comes to the believers, you have to cheer up with cheering, with a pleasant mode and gestures, you talk to them. When you talk to the opposing party, you need to make sure that you are cordial and polite and respectful. Why? Because as we have said, the purpose of the argument and debate is not the debate itself. You don't want to score a point and take vengeance against your adversary. This is not the whole objective and purpose. Rather, the purpose is that you invite them to the pleasant way of Ahl al-Bayt Our responsibility and our duty is to show the method of Ahl al-Bayt, the school of Ahl al-Bayt, the way it is, the way that God 
has sent Ahl al-Bayt to and Ahl al-Bayt have presented themselves in its true nature, we need to express that method, that methodology to the world, to the people worldwide. Therefore, we must gain their hearts and their minds. So the purpose of debating is that we should express the philosophy of Ahl al-Bayt their world views, as well as inviting people to embrace this beautiful, beautiful way of life. That is our duty. Therefore, if we cannot gain the hearts and minds of people, we will be failing miserably. Therefore, the Imam السلام, and all members of Ahl al-Bayt always emphasizing on this fact is that when you talk to the adversaries, first, you need to be polite. Second, you need to be respectful and cordial. And when, we, when you speak, you should show sympathy to the other side, that both are searching for the truth. Here the Imam Ali salam again Al Imam Al Sadiq, says, Ma'ashara Shia Kunu Zainalana Wala Takunu Alayna Shayna. Be our ornaments. When people look at you, they can see the importance of us Ahlul Bayt. Be our ornament. Wala Takunu Alayna Shayna. Do not be an embarrassment, shame to Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq. Qulu lil-nasi husna. Always use a pleasant words when you talk to people. Wahfadu al-sinatakum. And control your tongues. Wa kuffuha an al-fuduli wal-qabih. Abstain from pugnacious things, from repugnant things. There are words, although they could be factual and true, but they are scathing. They are very rude and pugnacious. The Imam, peace be upon him here, says, try to avoid that. It's a mandate we have to follow. To, to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, actions speak louder than words. I may be a very eloquent speaker when I present the case of Ahl al-Bayt to people, but in demeanor, in my vocabulary, I chase very scathing words. The Imam says, this is not the choice. The choice is your demeanor, your behavior, and your attitude toward others. Because actions always speak louder than words. Again, the Imam السلام, says this. He says, قُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna بِمَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يُقَالَ لَكُمْ In the same way, that you want people to talk to you, to address you, how you would like them to address you, in the same manner you have to address them. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِضُ السَّبَّابَ الطَّعَانَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ God would hate, despise the person who always curses and attacks and denigrates others, believers and non-believers. This is not the way and a style of Ahl al-Bayt to have a foul mouth, billah, a bad mouthing. They're always, when they choose their wor words, they choose it very carefully, in a very pleasant way that God is satisfied with them and the audience is also satisfied with them. Another example, brothers and sisters. Look at Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, engaged in the three deadly bloody wars, domestic wars, with Qasatin, Nakithin, and Mariqin, three sets of a group of so-called Muslims who have waged deadly wars against Ali ibn Abi Talib. Among them was Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, who have institutionalized the hate toward Ali ibn Abi Talib and Ahl al-Bayt throughout history. And today, as followers of Ahl al-Bayt, we are paying 
for the strategy that Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan has set 1400 years ago. But look how Ali ibn Abi Talib faced such kind of hateful people. One day he leaves the masjid and then see a bunch of his followers cursing Muawiyah and his followers. He looks at them and says, Inni akrahu lakum an takunu sababin. I hate, I despise the fact that you curse people, you denigrate people, you use vulgar language against other people, even though they are your bitter enemy, even though they have killed many among you. Then he says, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ لَوْ وَصَفْتُمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Be objective. Describe their actions, their deeds. You do not need to denigrate them with foul language. Rather, you just describe what they have done. Put the facts and the reality to the audience. And the audience will choose. The audience is mature enough to see where the right and the wrong pathways are. Therefore, the Imam admonishes his followers not to use negative language, cursing his bitter enemy, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Again, he, will, he continues with this. He says, if you want, then you say this, Allahumma haqin dima'ana wa dima'ahum. O God, protect and save our bloods and their bloods from shedding. After all, both are considered to be Muslims. One side is a true Muslim, the other one is only by appearance. The facade is Muslim. Even to Ali ibn Abi Talib, this is good enough that we should save the bloods of both groups. He says, Allahumma haqin dima'ana wa dima'ahum. وَأَصْلِحْ ذَاتَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ Bring peace among ourselves and them. وَهْدِهِمْ مِنْ ضَلَالَتِهِمْ O oh God, guide them. Get them out from their misguidance. حَتَّى يَعْرِفَ الْحَقَّ مَنْ جَهِلَهُ So they can realize where the truth is. In another case, when he was fighting Mariqeen, the Khawarij, who were the, again the bitter enemies of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Today, if we, want, if we want to give an example, ISIS group is like the Khawarij. Again, people came to him to describe who they are. They told Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, are the Khawarij mushrikeen? He said, no. Hum min ash-shirk farru. They run away from being mushrik. They are not mushrik. Look how objective and precise Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was. Qila fa'innahum munafiqoon. What are those hypocrites? Again, Ali ibn Abi Talib says no, because they keep worshipping and praying. He said, Inna al munafiqina la yathkuroon Allah illa qalila. Their feature, the munafiqin feature, is that they mention Allah a little bit while they mention Allah, Allah all the time. So they ask Ali ibn Abi Talib, who are they then? How would you describe them? The Imam alayhi salam says, hum ikhwanuna baghaw alayna. They used to be our brethren. They are our brothers, but they aggressed against us. This is how objective Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam was when dealing with his better enemies. This is the way that we should conduct ourselves with the adversaries. Again, coming back to Al Imam Al Sadiq. Salam. Imam Al Sadiq had 4,000 students. Maybe half of them were his followers. The majority were not his followers. Al Hasan ibn Ali al Washa, he says, One day I go to the Masjid al Kufa and I see 900 narrators. All of them says, Kullun yaqul haddathani Ja'far ibn Muhammad. All of them have been students of Ja'far ibn Muhammad. None of those were the followers of Ja'far ibn Muhammad. How could he manage to 
to have so many students that were not on the same track that he is. By denigrating them, by using foul language against them, or by showing them the real objective scientific evidence and critical thinking, or because he was showing the intellectual, the genuine intellectual substance. Because when he shows the real genuine scientific objectives and evidence, it is very hard to repudiate and to counter. But had he chosen to denigrate them, they would reciprocate the words with the words of denigration. The last thing that I would close my remarks with, again, with the beautiful words of Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi salam who says that, unduru ila a'immatikum, follow the example of your leaders, alladheena taqtaduna bihim, fatasna'oona ma yasna'oon, you follow what they follow, fa wallah, innahum layaudoona marvahum. When the other side, when their followers get sick, we go and visit their sick people. وَيَشْهَدُونَ جَنَائِزَهُمْ We take part in the procession of their, of their deceased. وَيُقِيمُونَ الشَّهَادَةَ لَهُمْ وَعَلَيْهِمْ They get particip they participate in all their activities. وَيُؤُدُّونَ الْأَمَانَةَ إِلَيْهِمْ They give them their trust, whatever they have entrusted them, they give them back these a trust. Then he says, إِنَّهُ لَا بُدَّ لَكُمْ مِنَ النَّاسِ إِنَّ أَحَدًا لَا, يستغي لا يستغني عن الناس في حياته. You cannot abandon people. You have to assimilate. You have to integrate with others. This is how our Imams want us to be. Let's hope that we can follow them. Amen. يا من كل شيء خاضع له يا من كل شيء خاشع له يا من كل شيء كائن له يا من كل شيء موجود به يا من كل شيء منيب إليه يا من كل شيء خائف من يا من كل شيء قائم به يا من كل شيء صائر إليه يا من كل شيء يسبح بحمده يا من كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا من لا مفر إلا إلي يا من لا مفزع إلا إلي يا من لا مقصد إلا إلي يا من لا من جاء منه إلا إلي يا من لا يراب إلا إلي يا من لا حول ولا قوة إلا به يا من لا يستعان إلا به يا من لا يتوكل إلا عليه يا من لا يرجى إلا هو يا من لا يعبد إلا هو سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث 
خلصنا من النار يا رب يا خير المرهوبين يا خير المرهوبين يا خير المطلوبين يا خير المسؤولين يا خير المقصودين يا خير المذكورين يا خير المشكورين يا خير المحبوبين يا خير المدعوين يا خير المستانسين سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back with the beautiful and eloquent Dua Joshan Al Kabir. Tonight we will cover segments number 37, 38, and 39. As it says, Ya man kullu shay'in khadi'un lah, Ya man kullu shay'in khashi'un lah, Ya man kullu shay'in ka'inun lah, Ya man kullu shay'in mawjudun bih, Ya man kullu shay'in munibun ilayh, Ya man kullu shay'in khaifun min. يا من كل شيء قائم به يا من كل شيء صائر إليه يا من كل شيء يسبح بحمده يا من كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه The translation O oh, he before whom everything bows he before whom everything is humbled O oh, he from whom everything exists he to whom Everything owes its existence. He to whom everything returns. He of whom everything is afraid. One to whom everything owes its stability. He towards whom everything retreats. He whom everything glorifies with praise. He besides whom everything is perishable. The theme of segment number 37 is to win struggles again a few vocabularies that we have chosen for this segment it is ya man kullu shay'in khadi'un lah ya man kullu shay'in khashi'un lah ya man kullu shay'in ka'inun lah everything humbles everything bows to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you do not see anything that can deviate from the order that God has delineated for. Everything is going in the same path that God has ordered him. We are humbled and bow to the order and will of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a beautiful dua, word of prayers by Zainul Abideen alayhi salam that's called dua al-am. It's a very beautiful word. It says, وَجَرَى بِقُدْرَتِكَ الْقَضَاءِ وَمَضَتْ عَلَىٰ إِرَادَتِكَ الْأَشْيَاءِ فَهِيَ بِمَشِيئَتِكَ دُونَ قَوْلِكَ مُؤْتَمِرَةً وَبِإِرَادَتِكَ دُونَ نَهِيكَ مُنْزَجِرَةً That the will and the fate of everything is moving according to your will and your pleasing. Then it says that, they will follow your words without articulation. There is no need for you to articulate the directive and the will and the command. Once you decide, once you will, the fate of those will happen immediately. فَهِيَ بِمَشِيئَتِكَ دُونَ قَوْلِكَ مُؤْتَمِرًا 
You know, the words in the Holy Quran says, Kun fayakun. But God doesn't even need to say Kun. The minute that He wishes, the moment that He wishes and it pleases, that thing will immediately happen. And then again, it says, Waduna qawlika wa bi'iradatika duna nahika munzajara. It is with your will, without your prohibition. You don't need to say it is a prohibited. They will abstain from that thing. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has maintained this universe. Everything is in his control when he says, كل شيء كائن له يا من كل شيء موجود به we owe our existence. Everything in this universe owe their existence to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He not only created us, He maintained us. You have two things. One is the creation, then manufacturing, and the other thing is the maintenance. Maintaining things may be more difficult than creating them because they should stay over a very long period of time, lapse of time, they have to stay the course. The one who would maintain us is the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another beautiful verse in the Holy Quran, he says, God is the one who has protected and holds the heavens and earth from perishing. إن الله يمسك السماوات والأرض أن تزولا ولا إن زالتا إن أمسكهما من أحد من بعده. And if they perish, who can protect them? Who can, you know, hold onto them except the Almighty Allah? Therefore, in our prayers, we are taught to say اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين أبدا. Do not leave us to our own. Always He should keep us. He should maintain us. One night, the wife of the Prophet, Umm Salama alayhi salam, says that one night in the middle of the night, I heard the Prophet while prostrating, he was wailing and weeping and saying this, Ilahi, la takilni ila nafsi, do not leave me to myself even in a blink of an eye. She said, Oh, the Prophet, it is you who say this? Why do you have to say this? You are the perfect Prophet. You are the best human. He told her, Ya Umm Salama, Inna akhi Yunus ibn Matta wukila ila nafsihi Yunus ibn Matta, my brother and the prophet of God, was left to him for a very short period and see what has happened to him. God should not abandon us at any moment. Always, here is the prophet teaching. This is how he exemplified the teaching in this incident when he told Umm Salama, if the Prophet, the infallible, the best of all, all the creatures say this, what about us? Much less about us. We always should say that, oh God, do not leave us even one minute to ourselves, a blink of eye to ourselves. Then another beautiful word, it says, Ya man kullu shay'in yusabbihu bihamdi. Everything. Every object in this universe glorifies the Lord in a praise, in a praising Him. There is a beautiful ayah in the Holy Quran that explicitly says that basically every single object in this universe glorifies God in a praise. It says, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُ there isn't anything that does not glorify the Lord. Every object, whether living or non-living, is glorifying the Lord. But the difference is that we do not 
tell. We cannot tell when those objects glorify the Lord. There, was, there is a wide discussion and controversy about this ayah. Some scholars say that this word of tasbih is not spoken, is not articulation, rather it is a state of being. It's an action. There are certain actions by objects, by constellations, by planets that beyond our comprehension. We cannot feel them. Here the Almighty Allah says, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. If we descend this holy Quran upon a mountain, you will see it so humbled and fractured into pieces. But we cannot notice this. In another one, the Almighty talks about the rock, the hard and stiff rock. It says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبَطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Some of those rocks, they prostrate out of fear of God. Again, it's beyond our comprehension. We cannot comprehend that. Or when the, when the Almighty tells both the sun and the earth to move to him closely. فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ اِتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهًا أَوْ كُرْهًا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ We come voluntarily. These actions cannot be comprehended. Yet, these are actions. So, first set of scholars say that these are only actions of glorifications. But other sets of scholars says the fact that God says you do not comprehend their tasbih, their glorification, it means that they say it, but without us understanding. For example, when the birds sing, whistle, and tweet, we think these are only a bunch of jargons. Why? Because we don't have the tools to decode their language. But Prophet Sulaiman used to understand their words, their languages. Why? Because he was equipped with the tool to decode their language. We do not have the tool to decode the tasbih and glorification of the objects when they glorify their word, their Lord. Once we have that, we comprehend how they do the glorification. The second segment, segment number 38, it says the translation, Oh, there is no retreat but towards him. There is no place of a protection except with him. Here, there is no right path except that which leads to him. There is no shelter against him but to him. There is no inclination towards anyone except him. Again, we chose these beautiful statements. يا من لا مفر إلا إليه يا من لا مفزع إلا إليه There is no retreat but him There is no refuge but him Where should we go? We can escape the family Run away from the family We can run away from local government From the police From the government From the Interpol But we cannot run away from God Why? Because wherever we go it is in his kingdom. It is in his custody. We cannot run away. There is a beautiful story. It says that there used to be a naughty boy that used to give his mom very difficult time. One day, the mom expelled him from the home because of the trouble that he used to give her. When she kicked him out of the home, after a while, her age, her, her rage subsided. She opened the door. She notices the boy is laying right on the doorstep and is sleeping there. When he left the home, he didn't know where to go. He had no place, no retreat, and no refuge but his mother. So he leaves her, but he comes back to her. In similar way, we leave our Lord but we have no other way 
but to come back again to him. The last segment, two, which is segment number 39, it says, Ya khayr al-marhubin, Ya khayr al-marhubin. Again, the translation, best of those who are feared, best of those who are liked, best of those who are sought, best of those who are entreated, best of those who are longed for. Again, if we need to beg somebody for something, if we need to ask somebody, if we need to fear someone and long for someone, let's make sure that that entity is sufficient. That entity itself is not in need. If you beg someone else, a human, for example, he's as weak as you are. If we fear some, someone or some human, he's again as weak as we are. We better choose an entity that is sufficient, and that is the Almighty. The story of Ibrahim, when he was about to be launched into the hellfire, at that moment, when the crowd was hailing him to be thrown in the hellfire, at that moment, Jibrail came to him, the angel, told him, Ibrahim, you need something. He said, to you, no, because you are a weak servant of God, similar to me. But to my Lord, yes, I do. This is how we should be. We should ask only the one who's capable and is strong enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us all the guidance in the, this holy month to follow through those words of wisdom of Dua Joshan al-Kabir. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The lovers of Allah are those who look at the inward side of the world while the other people look at its outward side. They busy themselves with its remoter benefits while the other people busy themselves in the immediate benefits. They kill those things which they feared would have killed them and they leave here in this world what they think would leave them. They took the amassing of wealth by others as a small matter and regarded it like losing. They are enemies of those things which others love while they love things which others hate. Through them, the Quran has been learned and they have been given knowledge through the Quran. With them, the Quran is staying while they stand by the Quran. They do not see any object of hope above what they hope and no object of fear above what they fear.